Hello, welcome to this presentation on item baking. Item baking is a key stage in the process of developing large scale or higher stakes examinations. It drives the quality of the assessment process um, as well as improving the overall business process of it, making it more efficient and thereby easier for the sometimes large groups of people involved. I'll talk about some of the key components of item making, uh, to give some examples in our software, uh, provide uh, some reasons why item making is so important, talk a little bit about the future of item making software. A little bit about me, um, I have a PhD in psychometrics from the University of Minnesota, um, and my uh, career is centered around uh, designing software that makes it easier to apply best practices in assessment psychometrics. Item baking is one of those pieces, but I'm also interested in, in things like item response theory, adaptive testing, automated test assembly, and automated essay scoring. So first of all, what is item baking? Item baking is a centralized software platform uh, that allows you to more efficiently develop assessments. Um, there are a couple of key steps to that. Uh, one, the first step, of course, is the authoring of test items. Typically, they're done online directly in the system, but some systems also allow them to do offline, uh, including using Microsoft Word templates that can be uploaded. Uh, there's functionality to review test items, uh, because when you're talking about high-stakes exams, in most cases, the items have to go through a very specific review process before they're allowed to be used on an exam. Uh, you store metadata about the items, uh, such as content area, uh, cognitive level or complexity, uh, past statistics from usage, uh, who wrote the exam, or who wrote the item, when it was written, and so many more things that are important things to track. Uh, it's used to assemble test forms, and then it's used to print, export, or deliver those forms. Now, in some cases, it's exported elsewhere so that you can deliver it or maybe deliver it on paper. But in most cases, item baking platform uh, is part of a cloud-based ecosystem that's designed to develop, deliver, and analyze the assessments, thereby managing the entire assessment's life cycle. So, why is item making important? Well, first of all, uh, item making software platform makes it easier to author and review items, uh, thereby saving time for the people who are doing the authoring and reviewing. Uh, it makes it easier to assemble and manage test forms, especially when you're talking about organization that might have hundreds of test forms. Uh, it makes it easier to manage item banks and track item usage on their test forms uh, so that items are used more effectively. It makes it much easier to track item metadata. Uh, it makes it easier to move towards online delivery, especially if you're you know, still um, struggling to deliver and develop paper exams using your Microsoft Word. Um, and it facilitates reporting that informs stakeholders and can help manage future work. Um, by having all of your items in one central place, it's easy to run a report to see how many items you have in each bank of each item type and which author wrote the most and which content areas they cover and things like that. And thereby allows you to uh, more accurately direct future efforts in developing new items. When you get down to it though, what item making is about is it makes it much more efficient um, to develop and um, publish assessments if you have large numbers of items, users, or tests. You know, if your item bank is only 300 questions, um, yeah, then you can probably keep it in Microsoft Excel or uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, but if you have an item bank that is 30,000 questions, and you've got uh, dozens of users, and many different item banks that can be completely separated, um, and other advanced situations like that, you really need a professional eye making system. And by using this, it's going to save large amounts of money and time um, because it makes your users more efficient. Um, and it also has the benefit of driving validity. So validity, there's many different aspects of it, but boils down to having evidence that supports the inter intended interpretation of test scores. And one key point of evidence is having content-related evidence um, and evidence of having a, a quality test development process. So by having a system that makes items go through a review process and can track what that review is, um, it thereby contributes to validity. What is an item bank? You can think of it as a central repository for test questions. Now, very early on, back before the days of computers, uh, item banks were essentially like the 
card catalog system in a library, um, for those of you who remember that. Uh, so you've got this cabinet that has lots of index cards, and each index card has an item on it, let's say, written on it, and maybe on the back it's got um, notes about it, like, you know, who originally wrote it, what day it was written, uh, you know, what percentage of examinees got the item correct in each year, things like that. Well, uh, an item making software platform takes that same idea and digitalizes it. Uh, so that we've got this database online that stores all our test questions, but it also stores a lot of metadata information about it, such as what domain it goes into, what proportion of examinees got it right, what years it was used on, and so many other things. And then we take these items out of the database and assemble them into test forms. Um, and what happens is that the system will treat these items as reusable objects, and um, each item is only in there once, even though it might be on multiple test forms. Uh, and this is one way that a true item making system departs substantially from simple assessment authoring functionality like you might see in a learning management system or from using something like Microsoft Word. Uh, you know, if you think about Microsoft Word, you've got test form A or test form B. Um, in some countries, they call them question paper A and question paper B. Um, and if an item is on both of those, it's going to be in each Word document. So that item then exists twice. In a professional item making system, it only exists once, and it's pointed towards in each of those test forms. So the, some of the key functionalities that define a real item making system. First of all, like I said on the previous screen, it's a database of assessment items, and those items are reusable objects in the database. And they're going to have a lot of metadata that's associated with them. Content domain or standard is usually the most common one. Statistics is also very important. And a lot of organizations will track many more things, such as cognitive level, author, uh, date edited, date created, um, date it was used, on uh, a test form, which test forms it uses, and so on. Uh, and as part of that, like I have in the next bullet, is that we're going to be tracking usage. Uh, we want to know if an item was used on, you know, if your organization has four test forms per year, item was used on form A and form C in 2019, and form B in 2020, and form C and D in 2022. It's important to have such things automatically tracked, so when you're three, four, five, ten years down the line, you know how often an item has been used and whether it should be retired. Uh, you're also going to track the item history itself, uh, such as past edits to the item and by whom, so you know if somebody came in and accessed the item and changed it, um, or changed some of the statistics, um, that is then tracked as well. Items are going to have versioning, so that when they are edited, it can be upversioned. Um, and in some cases, this is automatic, and in other cases, it's not automatic, because especially in early on in the item development process, you might change something in the item because, you know, the item is newly written by a teacher and let's say an administrator comes along and corrects something within the content. Well, it's not necessarily a brand new version of the item then. It was, it's still early on and it hasn't been used yet. Item making system is going to have extensive search and filter capability. Um, it's going to allow you to find the items that you want to find and use them effectively. Uh, it's going to track item status. That's another important piece of metadata as well, is that you're going to have customizable status fields and be able to track which items are in which status. A true item making platform is going to have an item review workflow. Uh, most commonly, this is customizable. Um, so you might say that all items have to, you know, after they're written by someone, they're going to be reviewed by one other subject matter expert, and then they have to be reviewed by a psychometrician, and then they have to be reviewed by an English editor before they can be considered ready for use in an assessment. That's an item review workflow. Uh, your item making system might have item naming conventions, um, so that items are or can only be named with conventions uh, that have been assigned by the organization. Uh, you'll often be able to leave comments with timestamps on the items. Uh, the item bank system as a whole is going to have role and content-based access for users. Uh, for example, you might have math item reviewers, and they can only see the math items. They can't see English. They can't see science. And of course, because they're reviewers, they can only review. They can't edit. They can't create new items. They can't assemble tests. And they most certainly can't see student results if the uh, platform also delivers exams. Uh, item maker will also typically have a dedicated asset manager. Assets are uh, what we typically call multimedia files, such as audio, video, PDF files, images, uh, that sort of thing. 
Um, these are usually deserve to have their own database as well and be treated as reusable objects um, because you might have a, a graph a graphic of a multivariate plane or a bivariate plane or something else that's common and it might be used on 17 different questions in your bank. It shouldn't be uploaded 17 separate times, it should be only uploaded once and tracked which items it's used on. And um, most importantly, an item banking system should be collaborative. Um, it's the same reason that professionals use software like Jira or GitHub for software de development um, and you know, work tracking systems like Asana or Trello are also so popular as well. An item banking system takes the same idea, but it's designed specifically around the development of assessment content. So here's some examples of that functionality. Uh, first here I have a screenshot of our item banking platform, Assess AI. Um, and you can see uh, on the right side, it's giving a list of items in a bank. So, um, and you can see on the left here, uh, under the items heading, it says English, that because it says the name of the bank that I'm in is the English bank. And you can see it's providing the item IDs that I've uh, given to the items that I've written. Uh, stem text, uh, so you know which item you're looking at, tracks which author wrote these, the date they were created, they, they were modified, current version of the items, um, and then actions, you know, allowing you to duplicate items and other important things. I uh, notice also on the button up top, you can import and export out of this. And the graphics on the left allow you to get a snapshot of uh, what types of items you have and uh, what status they're in, as well as immediately provide searching and filtering. So this is a great example of some of the functionality that's needed inside a professional item back here. Uh, if you were to click on one of the rows in that table, it would bring up an item editor screen. Um, this is an example of what that looks like. Uh, this is a really basic part of the screen in that we're just editing a simple multiple choice item. Uh, but you notice on the top there, there's also tabs for about statistics and history. And those are entirely uh, additional uh, pieces that are attached to the item that are tracking you know, item statistics and important information about the item, like who the author was when it was written. Uh, another important piece is the customizable review workflow. Um, this is an example of what that might look like using what's called a Kanban board. Um, so I've specified this uh, uh, item bank to have three stages in the item review. Um, you're going to have a brand new item, then it's going to go to editor review, let's say an English editor, then it's going to go to a psychometric review by a psychometrician. Um, and then when it's, that, that's completed, it'll be considered done and ready to be converted to be an inactive item. Now this test of the functionality within an item banker is actually designed to be part of the foundation of the test development cycle. You know, tests are not developed in a vacuum. Um, it's usually part of a very professional cycle. Um, an example, you know, it might have a certification where you're creating test blueprints based upon a job analysis and items are authored that are matched to these blueprints. Now you're going to assign them to domains or cognitive levels or whatever is needed. The items go through the review process. They're assembled into test forms. Uh, those test forms are delivered to candidates. Um, after the test is delivered, you're going to analyze it with psychometrics to determine if items are too easy, too hard, too confusing, and many other things. Um, and based upon the results of that analysis, you're going to flag items that might be reviewed, again, based upon their statistics. So one that is too hard, uh, you might have subject matter experts look at it and say, okay, why is this one too hard? Let's go back to the item bank, fix it, get a new version of it, and then use that new version next year. So you can see it's how not just a standalone thing, it's a part of a long cycle that can happen several times a year over many years. So why is item banking important? Well, first of all, uh, it's you're trying to protect your investment. Items are actually very valuable pieces of investment because um, much effort and much expense is invested in developing them. Uh, you know, a lot of you might think in, in terms of simple items, like you know, items that are quickly written for a fourth grade math quiz. Uh, but you should also think about what it's like for uh, you know, an admissions test at national universities or something like that. Those items might cost $1,000 or even more once you add up all of the effort that goes into them. Um, so it's important to protect them and appropriately use the items. Having a strong item making system will allow you to improve item quality. Uh, it's going to treat it as a process with the quality control, with namely that uh, customizable workflow we process talked about, and it's going to make it easier to improve the items over time. 
Uh, an item making system is going to make your team more efficient. It's going to be much, much easier to manage large sets of items, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and you can compare this especially to trying to manage tens of thousands of items in Microsoft Word or Excel or in a learning management system. You know, learning management systems will often have some assessment functionality, but it's going to be very rudimentary because they're designed for learning management. They're not designed to be a professional item making an assessment platform. And by doing this, they're going to help reduce the cost of item development when you get down to it. Uh, it's going to facilitate the process of test development. Um, so it's to make it easier to assemble tests and publish those online tests. And it's going to make it easier to either export to migrate to other systems or to move them directly into delivery in your single ecosystem if that's what you're using for your organization. Uh, item making is going to provide validity documentation, like I said. Um, so it's going to track that the item went through a certain review process. Again, it's going to track comments from subject matter experts and psychometricians. Um, it's going to track how many items are used, what statistics you have on them over years. So if an item was getting easier because it was getting overexposed, it would be able to track things like that. Um, there are so many aspects about uh, you know an item making system that will actually contribute to validity documentation. Um, and of course, one of the key things is that collaborative aspect. Um, it's going to help subject matter experts work more effectively together. And it's going to keep them a little more engaged too, um, because they're going to be not just working separately in Microsoft Word's files, um, they're going to be part of this uh, collaborative workspace where they can comment on each other's items um, and, you know, and track what those comments are and work together to make the items more in informative and uh, accessible. And by doing this, it's going to make it much more scalable too. It's not that big of a deal using Microsoft Word's if you only got two item authors. But if you've got 20 item authors or 200 item authors, you can't have them each working in separate Microsoft Word files. You really need an item making platform. Now, some of the future about um, item making platforms, uh, it's going in the uh, direction of AI and automation, like so many other things in the world. Um, Psychometrics is actually one of the leaders when it comes down to it. Um, if you look in the psychometric literature, you'll see that there is actually decades of research on automated item generation, automated item review, and automated test assembly, um, as well as other AI things and assessment like automated essay scoring. Um, these all use machine learning models and other automation to make uh, the process of assessment development, delivery, and scoring more efficient. An example of it is shown on the screen here. This is a approach to automated item generation using uh, configurable fields um, to make uh, dynamic uh, permutations of an item uh, that provides item isomorphs, is what we call it then, or clones, because uh, those are essentially the same item from a psychometric perspective, but they're going to look quite different to um, different examinees that are seeing it and therefore be not as easily uh, exposable. So um, if you're interested in a professional assessment item making platform, um, I encourage you to visit assess.com and fill out the contact form and request a free account in one of our platforms. Um, and I'd love to provide a, a personal demo for you um, if you're interested in learning more about some of the advanced functionality within these. Thank you.